Yes, uh, welcome to my talk. I'm like so many people, I didn't expect that actually. Um, so it's nice that you all came. I will quickly start because there's a lot to tell and only 30 minutes time. Um, so maybe first a few numbers, like 2 million users worldwide, 35 million users in Europe, and 2.5 in Germany, so Snapchat is growing really fast, and there's more and more video views each day, especially in Ireland, Belgium, but also Germany and the Scandinavian countries it's growing. But the most important fact actually about Snapchat is that it's one of the youngest social networks, in, uh, in terms of the age of the users, 71% of its users are under 25. And that's really interesting because the other social networks, they don't have these numbers. And that's also interesting for politics because um, to reach out to this young audience, like the people between 13 and 25, it's not easy nowadays with the traditional media. And that's why I think, especially for political organizations, it's interesting to use Snapchat and to reach out to these young future voters, maybe. So, um, so a bit about my talk, like maybe a bit before on me, myself. I was working for the social media team in the European Parliament for two and a half years. And last year we came to Republica as well. And I tried the app a bit like out here. And afterwards we um, decided that we will start our own Snapchat account. And this is one year ago. And now the app, um, the Snapchat account of the European Parliament has 15,000 followers. So it was a success, we would say. Of course, there are other like stars that have a lot of more followers, but in terms of political communication, we said that it's a success. Um, maybe I explain a bit what's not this talk not about. Like I won't explain the app or how it works because I think there's a lot of useful guides out there that explain how you can do a Snapchat, Snapchat story or other things. And um, why I said for political organizations, I think actually that political organizations, they are a bit special because they are not like a company. There's not a lot of money behind often. And also they have to um, report back to their hierarchy and they have to make sure that their communication is in line with um, the communication of the other parts. So first, um, I will bring some examples. Actually, I brought one, of course, from the European Parliament one from the United Nations and one from the White House. And um, through, uh, in my presentation, you have a lot of examples from the European Parliament because, of course, I had the best access there. Uh, in general, the quality is quite bad because it's like a mobile app, so it's not recorded in HD or something like that. And then secondly, I will uh, focus on practical advice, like how you can set up an account for political organizations and how you, may, uh, how you can make the account a bit, a bit more known. And then the focus will a lot be on content, what kind of content you can publish as a political organization. And if we still have time, of course, I'm here for questions. Maybe on content, because I just talked about it, I didn't say it. When I speak about content, I mainly speak about stories, like, uh, I think for political organization, it makes most sense to post stories, like pictures and videos that you post and that are accessible for 24 hours. And on the app itself, like, I think the most important things is like to be creative, because it's a really young app, to experiment with it. Then it's really personal, like the human face that you have it, and it's really engaging and interactive. So coming to my first example now, um, the European Parliament. I can explain a bit um, how we did it, actually. We were a team of four or five people, and then once a week we were sitting together and thinking, okay, which topics could be interesting for the audience. And then we didn't pick every topic, but only the topics that were really interesting for people between 13 and 20 years old. And then we were not just picking the topics, but we were also thinking, how can we make them interesting for our audience? So often we handcrafted something, we made something, we made pictures. We always try to have like a very creative um, angle to show these topics. So I will show you one example now. So 
This actually was on the budget of Erasmus, and as such, we think the budget is a really boring topic. That's why we picked the cake to show it a bit. And then uh, we had the Lux Prize, and afterwards we also had something on radicalization. We worked a lot with quotes of uh, members of the parliament. And then, in the end, we have climate change. You will see it now. And um, we always put a link in the end as well. It's not possible to click on this link, and we, of course, cannot see how many people really like went on this link to check out, but just to have our message like said. And then another thing that's really important on Snapchat is behind the scenes content. So the parliament was an ideal place actually to show behind the scenes things because there's lo happening a lot every day. <laughs> so for this one, um, it was a plenary day. All the members of the parliament were in the house and I went into the plenary chamber actually to the to the very front and like I looked at the members and just mingled. And what's interesting, like what you should do also if you use it as a political organization, you should adapt a bit to the style. So here you see we put the chair thing that's like really like paint something on the pictures. That's interesting. And the second thing is we have the filter as well. After like a short time we said okay it would be cool to have a filter. And that's why we designed one from the, for the parliament and also for the parliament in Strasbourg. And um, you can just hand them into Snapchat and then they make them available. So um, the second example would be the United Nations. They went um, on Snapchat shortly afterwards in June 2015. And I picked two examples actually from the Paris Agreement that was signed a few days ago. And they also had like a special filter that they used, of course, on this occasion to show what they are doing. And the second thing why I picked the second picture is Leonardo DiCaprio and Ban Ki-moon. It's like celebrities as on all social networks, they um, sell also on, on Snapchat. And what's, I think, interesting here, you see, when you do a Snapchat, you have to be really close. So probably the person doing the Snapchat was here and Leonardo DiCaprio there. So that makes it, I think, really interesting for young people that you are with a Snapchat account so close to the people. And then um, they and did also the videos. Yeah, this is and you can follow the whole day on webtv.un.org. So um, little videos and a person like explaining what's happening there. And that's, I said in the beginning, like Snapchat's really personal app. Um, this, all, like the concept, somebody explaining something and even maybe the face in the picture, not here, but in other Snapchats, is really interesting and makes really then also interesting for the audience to follow it. And the second thing is like, um, I picked here like a Snapchat and this is interesting because the first thing you saw they made a filter and you can make a screenshot of this filter and then you can take a picture of something and put the filter on it. So you, it's like very interactive. You can show them where is your favorite place on earth. The third of example that I brought is the White House. They only went um, on Snapchat in January 2016. And um, what I think is super interesting there is that they are always so close to Barack Obama. Like here he went to Saudi Arabia and they were present as, as well and they pictured him a lot. And then they also work with filters. And I think this is why Snapchat is so interesting and why it's like such a good mix with politics. Because maybe these young people think our politics as such is really boring. But um, with Snapchat, you can be so close to the peop people that do the politics that it gets interesting again. So that was actually on the examples. Now I come quickly to the setup. Um, I think the most important thing is the name. Like you should choose a name that everybody can remember. Um, otherwise, the most of the adding thing is over the ghost. So um, once you have decided for a name, you can make like a very creative icon. You said like you just before saw the icon of the White House and the European Parliament. So it's a bit difficult for political organizations because they don't have this one face that they can put there, but mostly it's buildings. 
But in any case, be creative, think of something cool, and change it also from time to time. And then um, what's also important is in the setup, make sure that everybody can see your stories. Because uh, you have to change that in the settings, because the stories are the main part to com communicate about. Yeah, and then how to make the account famous. This is, of course, like one of the most um, important points, like because on Facebook it's it's like easy, it's really an open network, but on Snapchat it's not too e open. So the first point, of course, is like go on Twitter, on Facebook on Instagram and YouTube and tell your followers there that you are now on Snapchat and use your network there. And then the second thing you can do as well is like download your stories. For example, you can have a question in the first part of the stories and then upload it on another platform, for example, on Facebook or on Twitter. So followers have to go on Snapchat in order to get the answer to the story. Then you can also change your profile pic. A lot of people do that at the moment. You can go to Facebook or to Twitter and make the little ghost um, icon to your, uh, like for your profile. Actually, that helped a lot for the European Parliament to get more followers. And then you can also um, have on the website an icon not linking to the app itself, because that's not possible, but linking to the website of Snapchat with your ghost, so people can know how they find you. And then, as on other social networks, you can always work with influencers. I mean, we had somebody explaining us Snapchat before. Before, um, it's really difficult to find out on Snapchat who's big, but you can, of course, also work with other like influencers. What we did in the parliament once, um, there was a YouTube event, so we spoke to the YouTubers, and we had Melissa Lee from Breeding Unicorns like talking on our Snapchat account. And this was really well perceived, actually, by the followers in Germany. And then, of course, you can um, try to get in one of the live stories from time to time. And Snapchat has live stories like for really big events. And um, you can just try to get your content in it, especially if you have it with a filter and show the people that you are on Snapchat and you have your own filter, this is then really cool. So that brings me to my next point, measurement, which is like a weak point of the app, I think, for political organizations, because the measurement is quite difficult. You can see who and how many people saw your, like one pic or one video of the story, and you can see how many people took a screenshot, but you cannot see more. And also, you cannot see how many friends you have. So um, what we did in the parliament, we um, assigned weeks to each team member. And then they had to add people. And they had to say how many they added and put it in an Excel file to keep track on how many friends you have. Mm. And what we did as well, like um, once we had a new follower, we were sending them one like snaps, this one, for example. And this is really interactive. And they really appreciated that we sent them a pic um, as soon as we added them. And then here, this is quite an old one. But I just put it in order to explain a bit what you can see in terms of statistics. And what's interesting here, you can also see how many people skipped out. So if you have a lot of skip outs, you can see that maybe the topic wasn't interesting at all for your audience, or the picture was too long, or the video too long, or too many talking people. And then what we did as well were like polls. So we asked our audience, are you for or against something? And this is on organic food. We like do a picture like that. And um, after the story was there for like 20 hours, maybe, we could see here how many screenshots were taken. And we then told our audience, like, we did this poll on organic food. And actually, the majority is for or against it. And then maybe um, on the app itself, team use, I already said, we assigned a week. And that was also due to the fact if you use it with several people, it's a bit difficult because you can lock off the other person. So if somebody's just recording a story and your colleagues logs in, this could pose a problem because then maybe your picture is lost because it locked you out. So that's also why we did it that only one 
person is taking care of it. And um, in terms of measurement, it's always good also like to download your story for your archives or if you want to use them again. And on the app itself, also weak point is that it uh, needs a lot of battery and uh, you mostly always need the, like an iPhone to do it. Otherwise, it sometimes can pose really problems. So coming to my next point, interactivity. As I already said, like it's a really interactive um, application. So um, I think it was quite positive. What I really liked about Snapchat is like you get a lot of positive responses. So when I managed the Facebook account of the European Parliament, there were so many negative like comments. Um, but on Snapchat, in the nine months that I did it, I think I saw only three negative replies. And mostly, like, there were a lot of positive replies. Um, mostly, they said that they really like our snaps or the fact that we are on Snapchat as such. Then we got a lot of questions on internships, on, on the topics that we reported about. We got journalistic requests. And um, also, a lot of times, they wanted to know who's behind this account. As I said, it has like a really personal touch and a really human face, so they wanted to know like who's answering them. So from time to time, we've sent pictures from our team, the managers. And then the third thing, um, some people that came to the parliament, they also wanted to visit us or to meet us. So the first person that wanted to meet us was Anton from Sweden, and we met him. And that's him. I'm from Sweden, and today I'm in the European Parliament together with the European Parliament Snapchat team. And we spent one day with him. We um, showed them around in the him around in the Parliament. We did a story on him, and I think a lot of people saw that we really appreciate our fans, that we really come back to them, and that we take them serious. So that was quite nice. Then the second thing that you see is Robert Schumann. Like we did a lot of quizzes as well. Like we were asked, like asking a bit funny things, whose birthday is today, and afterwards we put like the response as well. And then the last thing is also like interactive. It's a little video we did in last summer, and uh, we were just asking the people how do you sa say summer in your language, and we always try to have a good mix between funny content and also serious Sauber. content. Estate. <laughs> okay. And what we did with the answers, like, um, it's not only that they sent off the answers, but we tried also, like, to show their answers. So we used the second mobile phone, and then we filmed what they sent us, and we put it again on Snapchat, so they really saw that we appreciated what they did. So now coming to my next point on content. I already explained a lot of things, like, for example, quiz, we have the poll, we have the chat, that we never did, but this is something I could imagine could work really well. You could ask the fans, what do you want to know from this or this politician? And then they could uh, send you questions, you can go there, ask them the questions, and put a little bit like behind the scenes content on it, and I could imagine that would work as well. Then uh, what we did as well is the wrap up of the week. That was like a um, concept that we developed along the way. Every Friday we did the wrap up of the week. That's where we featured like four to six topics that are interesting for this audience. We were thinking of creative way to show them and um, we were sending it every Friday. And then of course like behind the scenes content is really important. And then maybe also like a few points in general on the content. Like we always try that the pictures are not too long, that we don't have too much text. I mean, you can use a hack to put more text, but don't overdo it. That we use filters and lenses. So, like, adapt also to your audience and do it like they do it, so that they don't see that you, like, of course, they will always see from your content you are a political organization, but don't do it in a very serious and boring way. And uh, then it's really important to record it always in vertical so that people don't have to move their mobile phone. 
and um, we always try to post in the morning because um, it's proven that in school breaks there's a lot of um, like activity on Snapchat and we did like stories three or four times a week. And then um, maybe on the length, like we tried to not to overdo it, so our stories were never more than two minutes, like we really tried to be short. And then the last thing I just want to add is like be creative, as I already said, experiment, do what you think is cool. So now I have some examples. Of course, behind the scenes, we had a lot of Schulz and Juncker. Then um, we had the three kings. Hello, everybody. You know, politics can be very cool. You don't believe it? Look at the website of the European Parliament. And then we had Viviane Redding. So whenever we went on an interview, we tried to bring the app as well and ask the politician for like a message to the young audience. And that was Viviane Redding, what she said. And on this picture, it's interesting because it's especially the age group that we are aiming at. So once you tell them it's for Snapchat, they directly tell their friends, ah, cool, the European Parliament has Snapchat. And that's like um, some longer stories like that we did. This one is actually a story that we planned a bit with the interpreters unit. Hello, my name is and, um, I work in the Lithuanian booth. I interpret from English, French and Russian into Lithuanian and I also do ritual into English. Hello, I'm Lorenzo from the Italian booth. I work from uh, English, Dutch, German, French and Slovenian into Italian. And in this story we tried uh, just to explain a bit how they work. Probably the last two most interesting persons I had the honor to interpret were Angela Merkel and François Hollande. So we tried to explain their work and we um, spoke with them and let them do something so people get a real insight what's happening in the European so Parliament. So my job here is to listen in one language, analyze the information and then render it in a, into a different language. So now it's your so it's turn. How do you say I love language? I stop it here because I think time is also running out a bit. Um, then the wrap up, we started it always we with like things like that. And in order to make it recognizable for the other people. And then the last one is actually a Snapchat story from um, COP21, where we went with a team and where we also tried to give um, some insight. Can put it on. The Chinese delegation, the Russian, and also part of the important delegation for the time. So we always try to show them what's happening behind the scene and what we are doing. That's it, basically. From my point, I don't know if we have any time left, but if yes, we could have two questions. Not? Okay. Yeah, do you, I think you were one of the first, and then I saw somebody there, over there. So we have a lot of microphones in here. So if you have questions, um, we have one, two, three ra hands raised. Yeah. So and we will the, start. The middle, the so we'll start in the third row. Hi. <laughs> I wanted to know um, if you always um, translate what the people say, if, if you always write it down. You did that um, when the um, people who translated the stuff, you wrote down what they said. Do you always do that? So do you always... Because um, some people don't turn on the volume on their smartphones. Ah, okay. No, we um, not always write what they are saying, but we just give a little caption because a lot of people watch the snaps on mute so that they ex at least exp uh, know a bit what's going on if they don't ca cannot follow the tone. Okay, we have room for two more questions. Yeah, hi. Okay, hi. Um, are there legal obstacles uh, you can stumble upon when putting content? Uh Actually, in the first nine months we didn't, but there's of course a few questions, for example, what if you use a picture that has copyright and you did take a picture of it, or what if you use music that has a copyright on it and you feature a bit of that? 
I don't know if it's already solved, but that's interesting questions. Okay, one more question. We have one over there. So, so second mic. Yeah. Hello, my question is, did you manage the terrorist crisis of Brussels? If yes, how? If not, uh, how would you have done it? Um, actually, I didn't, but I was on the app when uh, the things in Paris happened. And what we did is we put a picture on from Schulz with a quote. Like, I mean, we were always like relying on the politicians that worked for the organization. And then we kept, kept a bit calm. But that's what we did on all social media. Also, what they did after the Brussels attacks, there were no tweets for one week from the European Parliament. Okay. And one final question from the first row. Here, oh, no, sie hat, sie hat sich schon die ganze Zeit gemeldet. Danke. Ja. <laughs> um, Deutsch, Englisch? Englisch wahrscheinlich besser, ne? Um, how you make the video cards? I saw it was a video and uh, how you make it? Because if I use Snapchat today the first time, um, I can't take a video from my gallery, I just can make it No, live. that's what I explained. You have to be on the spot. So you make the video in the app, you put it on the story, and then actually it's automatically made into one video when you download the story. So you cannot make any cuts. Like it has to be directly this moment that you want to capture. Okay, so you didn't cut it, you made it live and yeah. put it together. Yeah, that's maybe the challenge. You have to do everything live. Okay. So thank if you. you take the wrong quote of Schulz, you will have the wrong quote of Schulz. Okay. Okay, thank and you. And so the final question. <laughs> Uh, you said that uh, there are six people working on Snapchat for the European Parliament. Did you? It depends. It varies a lot. Like in the beginning, we were two or three, yeah. and then we always try to get some people from the team. And like depending what we are doing, if we were acting a lot and we needed people to hold things, more people were helping. But maybe three to five were in the core team and they were like brainstorming on topics and things like that. How, how did you manage to convince the people that pay you? to give you that amount of personal to, to, to do that, because that's the biggest problem I, I always face, that uh, they say, social media, I don't care, or to, something like that. So how did you manage to convince them that this is important? I mean, the social media unit of the European Parliament is really open to new things, and they have 15 different social networks, and they are spreading the resources on all networks. So it was not such a problem. It was not... Per, like it was not five persons working full time, but it was five persons working maybe like half an hour or one hour a week on it. Okay, okay thank you. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much.